there's something special about being able to see how the waterfalls, the, the mountains, the wildlife, and the weather all work together so beautifully when I get out to go hike and be in the outdoors. But when I'm out there, I can't help but wonder sometimes, how can this be so beautiful? How can this be so awe-inspiring? How can this be so perfect? I remember driving into the Southern Virginia Highlands in the fall and the amount of color, I don't think I had ever seen that amount of color in all the previous years in the fall, even hiking in other places in the mountains, I had not seen that much color. There was red, purple even, and orange and yellow, all the different colors you could think of underneath that sunshine and it was just glistening in the horizon. So fall just is the color and the way when you're, you're filming or taking a picture, even if you're not, even if you're just experiencing it, it's just something else. And you also have that change in season, so it's getting a little bit colder, so you have that breeze that comes down as well, so I think that's pretty special. And even when you're in the mountains too, like I'm a meteorologist, and so I love when the weather always changes. So when you're in the mountains in the fall, the weather is constantly changing. And when you have that cloud deck with the fall colors, it kind of enhances it and something that I didn't even think about until I saw that for the first time. And so that's just outright gorgeous. For winter, I know some people think that it's really kind of a dark season because it's cold, everything seems dead. But when you get to go out in the outdoors and if, as long as you're willing to brave the cold, I mean, I know it gets very cold. I mean, I've been in some very, very cold conditions. I remember Rowan Mountain in Tennessee going up there. That was the coldest weather I've ever experienced you almost feel like you're in Antarctica. You see all these videos about like, oh, here's Antarctica, look at the wind, or Alaska, and it looks crazy. That's right in your backyard in Tennessee. Like, I never even thought that was even possible. So being able to be experience all this is just incredible. But in the wintertime, when it's snowing too, actually snowing, I remember in Fall Creek Falls State Park in Tennessee, filming waterfalls in the snow. It was cold, but the snow actually falling, you could hear it hit the trees and it falling from the branches. No one else around you, just hear the water and just see it. just the landscape within the snow and it was just like, I could stay here forever. Fall has got to be my favorite season around here. Other than winter and the fresh snow, but you don't always get the fresh snow or you don't always get the chance to see the mountains in that fresh snow, but when you have a month plus, especially this past fall, of awesome foliage, it doesn't get better than that. And I think we have one of the most beautiful parts of the world where you can see all the colors in one area. 
Autumn is my favorite season, most pretty season. And the reason being is because of the change of colors of the trees. And I'm from the Sand Mountain area, so I see a lot of trees and everywhere I look, it's orange, it's red, it's yellow. And um, you know it's coming, you know, it's about to be winter time, but you don't mind because it's so, it's just perfect. In the fall, you see everything starting to slow down and cool down a little bit. You don't have to worry about like ticks or bugs as much. It's a very beautiful experience because you see just all of these vibrant colors. Now, it's not too hot, it's not too cold. Always bring something to get wet in though. That's that's the big thing. You, you never know what trail is going to be muddy or uh, what waterfall is going to be flowing really, really fast and splashing you. But the fall is one of my favorite seasons to hike in and explore. So I think fall would probably be my favorite season in the sense of when I like good being outside and doing things outside. But I think that the way that it resonates with me is with spring because it goes from this time of things being dead and there being darkness and coldness and it gives us this kind of light and warmth that we all need in our life. Any, there's there's beauty in any season, even spring, like spring, oh, you see the, the birth of all the plants coming back, but I go back and forth with my seasons between, as a hiker, between summer and winter, like which one's my favorite? A lot of people would be like, winter, like why would you, like all the leaves are gone, but winter to me has, it depends on where you are, but if you're up on a mountaintop, you don't really even have to be at an overlook to see the expanse of, of the view because you know the trees are all the leaves are gone so you can see straight through all the trees. But summertime I like because it's you know you can get in the water even though the waterfalls aren't as depending on the rainfall winter definitely has better waterfall action in my experience so I go back and forth but I do like fall as also because mainly the, the colors of the leaves. So I love summer because it's warm outside and all the you know green leaves and everything but I love the fall because of all the different color leaves and all that comes with fall. But then I also love winter just because snow. I do love snow. So, I don't know, I love all of them. So, I can't really pick one. Probably summer because it feels nicer. I like warmer weather, but I would take any of them. Where I grew up in South Alabama, we had two seasons. There was mud and mosquitoes. And they last year round. They never end. But moving to North Alabama and to Huntsville, you know, we actually get four seasons. But I don't know if I could, I don't know if I could choose. Maybe fall. Beginning of the fall, you can still go out and swim. It starts cooling down a little bit. You have football season. Uh, all the good things about fall, the leaves start changing colors, which is also new to me. And it's a beautiful time of year. I like to be outside no matter what. I don't care if it's 10 degrees. I don't care if it's 110 degrees. I'm, I'm going to be outside doing something. I'll be sweating or I'll be freezing. And that's just the way it is. There's so much hope with spring. It's Easter. Um, and I just think that's that reminder. You know, you go through winter and down here in Alabama, it rains a lot and it's kind of gloomy. I mean, it's gray outside right now. But I feel like with spring, I've always just been so amazed at the fact that things die and yet they come to life again. And that happens every single year. Like things that look so broken or destroyed or ugly and brown, they come to life and they bloom flowers. and. I don't know, so it's always just been a really special time, I feel like, in my life because it reminds me there's always hope, no matter how dark the winter, no matter when things look pretty, you know, grim and dim, there's hope that it's going to get green again, it's going to be bright. So we don't always really get spring down here in Alabama, but when we do, it's the best. So living in Hawaii for three years, I never really realized how much I appreciate the seasons. Just being able to do different activities in each season kind of means a lot to me. I will say hiking in the fall is my favorite just because the weather's beautiful. You don't usually have to bundle up, but also like it's a nice breeze so you're not freezing at the top, but it's, it's you don't need to wear a jacket sometimes. And then my favorite is the leaves changing 
getting ready for winter. I also love the spring because you see everything blooming and it's not too hot and it's not too cold. I think hiking is a lot more beautiful in the fall. Fall. I love fall, like the changing of the, the leaves and just everything from changing from like how it was so hot to the weather now coming cool. Like just thinking about it right now, it gets me amped up for fall. <laughs> I love being outdoors in the fall because you, you should get that, that smell too. Like, I don't know, like it smells like fall. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just love being outdoors in the fall. It's my favorite time. You would think I would say summer because, you know, summer, that's when most people want to get out. And good weather, hot, everything. Of course, you're going to go out and go hike. But I will say the very first time I went to Fall Creek Falls in the winter, I've been there many times, but never in the winter. It was one of the most beautiful sights I've ever seen. To see everything covered in snow, untouched, and just like, it's almost like perfect. You ever get that, that fresh layer of snow on your drive in your, in your front yard and it looks so like straight and perfect. You don't want to mess it up. That's how it looked out there. But it was just around all the trees. To see all, all the icicles that were forming on the trees and and all the, the snowflakes that were just like perfectly beautifully crafted when they fall. I mean it just covered in white and it, it in the to see the waterfall around it as well. I can't really like describe it fully because it was just so awing, but I would definitely say in the winter that was the best time to see in terms of like the views. It was awing, amazing, perfectly beautiful. <laughs> Every single spot that I've been to has always come with a journey, even if it's a local area. There's always a journey involved because every experience is always different, all the time. I don't care if it's local or if it's a long drive that I have to make, but I'm never gonna get to that destination if I don't make the journey. I can understand sometimes why the outdoors can be daunting, especially for the first time. Yes, hiking can be difficult, so you want to be smart when you go out and hike and find these places. Make sure you can make it there. What's the road like to get there? Can you make it in your car? What you need to pack when you go hiking? How long is the hike? If there's places that may be washed out. Definitely check all that before you were to try out the outdoors. That's what I do all the time before I do my personal hiking. But don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, there was so much out there for people to grasp in the outdoors. And even if it's local, even better. Try it out there first before doing a long journey. Do it with other people and just have that fellowship. Love is Gap, going out to Georgia, doing it with other people. There's something special in that, having that fellowship with other people. Even when I get to film, like I get to meet new people and just see people smile and get to share in that, that joy and smile in God's creation and look at all these beautiful places. It, it's just so special in that. So if you don't try it, you're gonna miss out on so much. And try and experience the journey and make that moment. I would say first do it with friends <laughs> because you don't want to get lost by yourself. Enjoy it. Enjoy being outside. I mean, there's no pressure. Follow the map for sure. You don't want to get lost. Stay on the trail. There shouldn't be any pressure behind it. Just enjoy it. You know, enjoy God's beauty and enjoy the fellowship with others and be a great time.
Honestly, like, the outdoors isn't really, like, it's not that intimidating. It's really enjoyable getting to be outside and wear shoes that you're not scared to get dirty. But besides that, like, just, you know, go out and enjoy yourself. I do believe that people stick their heads in their phone too much and miss a lot of the world. So any chance to be outdoors, yes, I would 100% tell them that they should experience life for what we have it because you can't really find that on your phone. dive in it's it's one thing to say oh it's a four-hour drive but the entire experience is worth it doing small short hikes uh, in a local environment is great but it's just the tip of the iceberg when you get to see the true adventures of Amicalola or Hilton Creek Falls it's just so much different because it's not something you can see every day that to me is the reason why it's so much more beautiful because it's something you can't go out and open your back door and see every day but it's also don't be afraid to, to wake up early and go on those travel and, and travel for four hours and yeah you might get back at eight o'clock nine o'clock ten o'clock but time in nature away from all of the things that bog you down throughout the week don't be afraid just to, to dive head first and go explore with your friends never get enough. I wish I had more time dedicated to that. Whenever I do go out, it's always fresh. It's always something new. It's always exciting. It's like opening that gift on Christmas. Go try it. Just straight up, go try it because it's like a door. You know, a lot of times there's all these doors in front of us and we don't know what's on the other side of it until we actually open it up and go through it. And that's what this was kind of like. I mean, driving three hours, yeah, it sounds kind of crazy sometimes, but when you do it with great people, great conversation, you're going to a great place. It's a, a journey that you may never have expected, but it's a journey that you'll always remember. There's been plenty of times where I've gone on these adventures with Joshua and Stefan and all these other people, and I didn't know what to expect. I'm usually just along for the ride. I'm just like, all right, let's go. But on the way there and while we're there, it's just something like I've never experienced before every time I go. And it's just, it's, it's those moments that you can't emulate with by looking through a screen. You actually have to be there to experience it for yourself. So I would just encourage everybody, just go try it. I mean, even if it's just one time, because you'll never know what it's like until you go through that door. And I'm glad I've been going through many doors recently, so I'm very grateful that I've been able to experience those journeys. You could YouTube videos, you could read a book about someone going hiking, but getting out there and experiencing it, you take it in differently than most people do. So I think it's a lot better to get out there on your own, have that own journey, have that own experience, and make your own memories instead of just watching it through a screen, watching TV, reading a book. It's definitely a lot more memorable. I guess it depends on the person, but driving that far to see something as beautiful as like a waterfall or something, I think it's worth it. Even just snowboarding, like if I go drive six hours to snowboard, I just appreciate it more. I'm not on my phone, like I'm taking it all in. You just go out there, especially when you drive with friends, you, have, you make memories on the way, listen to music, chat, and then you get out there and it's all worth it. I would definitely encourage anyone to go out there and just give it a try. And it's like it only, some of these places like I've discovered recently in North Alabama, like within an hour, hour 15 minutes, you can find some really cool stuff. Like that's what I've been focusing on recently, trying to get out and uh, just see what North Alabama has to offer because like I love my state. And I would love, I, I love exploring other states too, but I want to be able to say like, I've seen everything there is to see in Alabama, especially North Alabama. The drive, I mean, an hour, an hour and a half tops, you can find some really cool stuff. 
And as the more you do these hikes, you'll get more confidence, but you have to start somewhere. So I would definitely encourage anyone who's not used to going outdoors just to give it a shot. And hopefully you would have the same experience as me and form the same love for going out outdoors as I have. Well, I think trying something new is hard anytime you try it, but a lot of times it comes with great experience and great opportunities. So if you think about like running a marathon, whenever you first run it, you don't just go outside and try and run a marathon. You prep for it and you get ready for it. So even if you just go outside and spend like 30 minutes, just like doing a walk or whatever it may be, then you can build yourself up to like being able to do something. Well, it's just like any challenging thing in life, and the Appalachian Trail is definitely not easy. You have to have a discipline, you have to have stamina that you probably didn't know you had to get where you want to go. Especially if you're doing more than a couple of days. I mean, you can get three, four miles in, and if it's all uphill, you're ready to quit immediately. But once you start getting a hang, the hang of it, you know, you really love the fact that you started, that you had the discipline to get there to begin with. So it's not easy, but you're also going to learn a lot about yourself. At times, you're, you're ready to give up and you're like, and a lot of it is in your head too. You get, you get to the point where it doesn't matter. You're enjoying yourself, you're, you know, you're spending time with people. And a lot of times when you go on these long trips, you're getting to know a lot of people or getting to know people you've known better. So it is a challenge, but it's worth it in, it's in every sense. Well, pretty much if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> I remember going to New Zealand. I'd never hiked before in my life. And I was with my friend, it was her 26th birthday. And she told us we were going on this huge hike and I was like, okay, that's gonna be fun, sure. And I came out and I had like Birkenstock sandals on, jewelry, all this stuff. And she was like, are you sure that's what you wanna hike in? Pretty much I just had no idea what I was doing and it was super difficult. But you just learn as you go with anything. I think it's okay to get out of breath. It's okay to feel like I'm in over my head. But I feel like I've always learned, hey, when you come on the other side of it, you go, well, that wasn't too bad. And usually people always find, I want to do it again. So I say you go for it anyways, even if you're afraid or even if you don't know what to expect. You're still going to enjoy it. Don't knock it till you try it. I say it's it's important to go out there and experience it and give it multiple tries. Go and go and go until you find something about it you like. There's just so much variety and diversity in the things that you can see outside. I think about it like like prayer. You know, nothing and no one has ever taught a heart to pray. It's just something that you've got to figure out for yourself. And Whenever you go out to the outdoors, you know, at first you may not even know what you're looking for. I mean, walking around the neighborhood is getting you outdoors, but there's so much more to offer. I think about Huntsville and there's so many people that I've talked to that say, hey, where is it that you and Joshua are going all this time? I say, that was 10 minutes away, man. You can go anytime. And it's, it's amazing to share those things with people and let them know that there's so much of God's creation that you haven't experienced. And it's another way to just get in touch with him. Whenever we go hiking and, and you get this view above a city or above a mountain range or whenever you're you know, really high in the air and you can just see so much, it's beautiful and it makes you realize how small you are. And being small is important, being, being humble. Whenever you go up and you see something so big, God is so big, and you just grow smaller and realize that you have so many things to be thankful for. 
him being the most of all. I think about going snowboarding in Colorado. So you're riding the ski lift and, and you can just see in every direction. You realize that I may be 2,000 miles away from home, but it's still beautiful, it's still God's creation. It's just as amazing as, as before. And then whenever I take people for the first time, they may have been in Huntsville for 15 years. They may have been in Alabama for their whole lives. And then they didn't realize that this state and this area of the country has so many things to offer. Views like that, hikes like that, waterfalls like that. And then letting them experience it for the first time. And then sharing some of the things that I'm learning and growing in and experiencing through that and realizing that they can do it for themselves also. Those experiences are they're made for us. And whenever you can go out and and experience something and watch somebody else experience something for the first time. They may be seeing God for the first time, and that's amazing, and that's perfect beauty. I love the fact that you can get to a waterfall, and if it's flowing really fast, you can cool down some with the, the splash coming back from it. Uh, but the experience in the cave with Cody and Mina was really cool because it's something we've never done before. We'd been in like commercial caves where you're on a guided tour. This one, you get to experience the true darkness from the very beginning. Uh, it was very fun getting to see the different twists and turns and just hearing the waterfall in that cave was awesome. The the other waterfalls we had to experience though are super important to me because it's just so powerful. You hear thousands of gallons of water coming down and cascading down and hitting the ground and you see the spray coming away from it. It's super cool to see and witness that power that just kind of untapped power. But I remember one of the first times I ever hiked up Blevins Gap and getting to see just that just random view of an awesome city is it's amazing. You it's just it's flat, it's open, you can see for miles, but you know, even the smaller trails always have something to see. We used to grow up going camping, so we would be outside all the time. But Blevins Gap I've done so many times and that's always really one of my favorite trails maybe the first time i went up there and got to see the views maybe because it's really pretty up there but there's one time actually me and my brother went and there's a bunch of rocks there and we just went and climbed on all the rocks and there's like this huge like bigger than this room rock that we were just climbing on with my brother so that was fun so when we went to Little River Canyon, I just felt like whenever we went into the water and everything that it was just like a little playground for all of us. And that we got to just go out and like hang out and not worry about like everything else that was going on in the world. I think whenever I was in Dalton, Georgia for my co-op, it's like up in North Georgia and there's like a lot of mountains and it's super nice. My friends and I like we go up there and just like take the rest of the day off of work and just spend the time up there. And it was just super nice to be able to be outside and just be with people and like not be able to have to talk to them and just be in that serenity of peace and being and enjoying nature. Well, the Appalachian Trail was the first thing that comes to mind. It was so memorable to me because it was, a, it was so new at, at the same time. And it didn't matter whether it was my first trip or my fifth trip, there's always gonna be a, like an adventure associated with it. One time I saw a black bear and her cub. Uh, another time I got poison ivy, so it wasn't so fun. But there was always a new experience. There was always something uh, unexpected that came along with it. And as far as the memorable experiences from my childhood, that, in, that included like fishing and frog gigging and hunting. I mean like waterfowl, for example, is a huge, like waterfowl hunting is a huge part of where I grew up. It's a sense of pride and you learn to respect the goose, the, the pheasant or the dove, whatever it is that you're hunting. So it's extremely memorable to me to think about those times as a child to, uh, to connect to nature in that way. I would say, I mean, there's every, I feel like almost every trail or or hike we go on, I feel like they're all memories. Um, I think the, the biggest memory that comes to mind is when we went to Nakalulu Falls and and we, we I feel like we got lost. <laughs> and we get, we finally get to the waterfall. And I'm like, man, this is awesome, you know, this is so cool. And 
you know, I'm like already tired and, and stuff. I'm, like, I'm ready to get back to the car, get back home. And I look to like my left and I see a stairway. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Like all we had to do was go down the stairs and get to the waterfall. <laughs> like we didn't have to go off trail and in, but it was awesome. Yeah, I mean, you can't beat Blevins Gap, that view. Um, it's just, like I say, you see God's glory in that view, and and it's, it's awesome. Like, get outdoors. That's all I got to tell people. Get outdoors. Um, New Zealand will always have a special place in my heart. I remember going once with my family and another time with a friend, but I remember getting off the plane and being like, I can't believe I was going to live all of my life and never see this place. It's just, its beauty is not just, I mean, it's just amazing. But I remember actually being in a really difficult place in my life when I was there with a friend, and we were hiking this one uh, mountain called Roy's Peak and a place called Wanaka, and it was so beautiful, and I had such ambition about me that I wanted to just get to the top because at that point in my life, you know, Instagram likes and, you know, projecting this, I guess, visual image of the things that I was experiencing, I really just thought would bring so much fulfillment to my heart. And I remember making it to the top and looking over, and it's one of the most beautiful pictures that I own. But I remember, you know, God kind of saying to me, you can travel the seas, you can go as far as you want to all over the world, um, but it's never going to satisfy your heart. Like, you see what I've made. And he was like, and that's external, but you don't yet really understand that like you have access to me internally. But I forever remember that because I've really learned that, you know, being in nature as beautiful as it is, it doesn't hold a candle to the way that God sees us and loves us. And it makes it awesome. I mean, it makes nature even more wonderful when you go through that lens. But I think that's why too, you know, you can travel and you can hike and you can do all of those things, but they'll never satisfy you completely. They bring you joy, but it's all about who is your source of joy, who is the person behind the painting of the landscape that you're looking at or the trail that you're walking on. Going to school in Hawaii was one of the best decisions I've ever made because I love the outdoors so much. And although I don't have the seasons there, it is definitely the best place I've ever been with the most amazing hikes. My favorite hike there is called Stairway to Heaven. It is, I believe it's over 3,000 steps straight up. And there are steps from hurricanes and stuff that are just sideways and some are just broken off. So many people do die on that hike, but it is one of the most breathtaking hikes I've ever done in my life. You get up to the top and it's just breathtaking. You could see every side of the island. I think it's the highest point in Oahu. So I grew up in New York. I've always loved hiking and it's kind of strange that I, I'm from New York because when you think of New York, you think of the city, you think of Nothing, nothing like hikes, but Long Island, there's some like nice beach paths and then on the north shore of Long Island there's some little hills and stuff, so it's definitely pretty there and being on Long Island Sound and everything, but my family and I always took trips up to New York State and the fall's beautiful there, they have Mohawk Mountain, I remember, it is one of the best hikes ever, you could see seven states, seven states from the top, and you have to like go through little rocks and stuff, but uh, yeah, New York, you wouldn't think it, but it has some pretty nice hikes. One of my other favorites is Levin's Gap because I always love meeting new people especially and Joshua had a big crew and I got to bring my dog Garrison and that was in the fall, my favorite season to hike. And just getting up there and Joshua's talked about it so many times so actually being able to get out there was amazing and being out there with everyone, meeting new friends and people and talking and just making memories was very special. So this past summer, me and my friends, we decided to do the, a uh, Grayson Highlands backpacking trip. And I was like, I'd never even heard of it. And my one friend, he, he's a huge backpacker. He goes like to South America and the Andes and all this. He planned it all out, so all I had to do was show up. And I drove my truck too, because we had to go off road up the mountain to get to the initial campground, which was thrilling in and of itself because the road to get up there was dirt and rocky and it was pitch black because we had just drove. So we set up our tents and we hear this moving around and we decided to turn on the flashlight. And it's just a mother, pon a mother pony and her little baby pony. And I was like, this is crazy. There's just ponies that are just chilling. Like they're just part of the wildlife. 
And just like all, oftentimes too, the terrain, once you get up into these elevations, it just changes and it just seems like something just see, it feels so different. Like you're up that high, there's no, in some places there were no trees, but then all of a sudden we go through an area, there would be trees and there'd be all this green vegetation. So it was a very interesting uh, experience up there. And it was my first backpacking trip. So Grayson Highlands has stood out to me. And like I've mentioned multiple times, probably just here in Alabama, the Sipsy Wilderness and the Bankhead National Forest. Something about when you get down into those little creek canyons with the huge rock, I guess, cliffs, it just feels undisturbed wilderness. Not many people know about it, not much human interaction. So every time I go down there, I love it because it's kind of like a freeing, peaceful, you know, having that alone time and escaping reality. One of my favorite moments, I don't remember the exact place. I think it was Fall Creek Falls, but there is a zip line or some type of cable line it's like a 150 foot drop going all the way down to this the this basis and it was a hard climb to get down there but we make it down there where you strain yourself sweat and just scraping yourself up all to get down there you're like is it even worth it and then when you get down there you just can't help but to just stop and stand in awe because of how beautiful the view is you just look up and see the waterfall the flowing of it. You see what's all around you and the stillness of the beauty that's around you. And it's like, of course, this is worth it. And I'll do it again. It kind of depicted me in, in my life and how there's struggle, but you can still find rest and, and joy and peace in Him in the midst of that struggle. Because when I was done, I could just see all the beauty that was there. And I was going to struggle again because I had to go back up, but it was worth it just knowing like, wow, look what's here. Look what's right in front of me. I would say the second time would be going through a, a cave cave, like not just a tour guide cave, a cave cave. I had no idea what I was getting into, but it was one of the most fun things I've ever done. We had to literally guide ourselves with, with flashlights and my butt was in the front. Why? I have no idea. But it was one of the most interesting, fun things ever because I was with a group of guys that just wanted to explore this cave and you don't know what to expect. You don't know what's in front of you. You just had the lamp at your feet. And it also kind of, it just kind of lit up to me in the, in the Bible how it says that the Lord is the lamp at our feet showing us what's, what's right there to make the next step. He's not going to show you a spotlight ahead Otherwise, you wouldn't trust them. But we had to just trust every step we had with that little light that we had. And it made a, a crazy good journey with my brother. So I'm very thankful for that. Seen the ponies, Grayson Highlands. Who knew there were wild ponies? Who knew you'd get so psyched about wild ponies? And, you know, we've been up the Blue Ridge Parkway, we've been up Run Mountain together. And what's amazing is just how fast things change. You can be in the 60s and 70s in the summer, and then a gust of wind comes, rain shower, or whatnot, clouds upper 40s, outflow boundary coming at us. What is this? Grayson Highland State Park and it's about those wild ponies and I remember sitting at work one day looking for new trails because I'm just always wanting to explore new places and I saw this picture of a pony and I looked it up and it was in Virginia like six hours I can spin that just have to 
forecast the weather properly before I go. And I've been there at least four times already with more to come. And the ponies come up right next to you. They come up right to you. And it's just another reminder that we're sharing. We have the privilege of sharing in God's beautiful creation with the wildlife. I mean, he created the wildlife. He created us. He created all this beauty around us. And we all get to share in that exact same moment. I think that's kind of special. So I love being able to go to the ponies. I remember filming the ponies multiple times and especially in the fall and towards the winter having not one not two not three but four ponies coming up right to the lens of the camera and it's just so special because you're up there 5,000 feet and there's wildlife right next to you and it's just like you're sharing in a very special moment I think that's super special Rowan Mountain in Tennessee is definitely a very special mountain to me because every time I go there, the weather is always different. But I remember going up with my friend Tyler Allender and his wife Courtney in the summertime. I remember seeing the clouds in the afternoon and thinking there's not gonna be much of a sunset, but we'll go up there and see what it's like. And it had been in like the 80s all day long, hot, humid, and we get up to the top in the 50s. Cool, but it feels great. And I remember we all went up to around 5,800 feet and we looked out towards the west and about every minute, the color started changing in, in the sky. And it was almost like God was putting his fingerprint right there and just changed, the color was changing. And it was one of the most memorable sunsets that I've seen and even was able to capture on camera for this movie. And it was just so breathtaking, so special to be able to capture that. And I remember going in the snow, there's about one to two foot snow drifts up there. I was up there filming at the top and there was a cloud deck that came in from the south and these sun rays started coming out of the clouds. And it was like God was putting his hand right there on top of us on this mountain with snow. And I was like, if I pass out, that's just the way it's gonna be. Because it was just something incredibly special. And it's a reminder that as I make this movie about perfect beauty and naming it that, it just always reminds me that God is always there. And every time I'm outside, I'm always reminded that his fingerprint is in everything he's created. And you can never forget that. When people ask me why I go out and hike and I'm making this movie, I love it. It brings back so many memories of where I've been to get to this point. And I can remember what the weather was like, what the wildlife was, was like there as well, wherever I go see these waterfalls or these mountain spots. And that's special for me. But I think there's also a beauty in that I get to share this with people in a completely different light. You know, God's given me a special gift to be able to film and be able to hike and look at the weather and see what's going on. So I feel like there's a special beauty in the fact that he's given me that ability and now I have the chance to share it back with everyone else. I've been on a long journey trying to get this movie done and it's been just a life-changing experience. So to be able to bring people on this journey as they watch this, I think that's super special. And I love that about what I'm being able to do in this movie. So growing up, my family, that was like one of the things that we always did growing up was camping, being in the outdoors, doing all that kind of outdoorsy stuff. So, you know, that's just what we always did. And that was our fun, you know. I guess what outdoors still means to me is just brings back good memories, child good memories. And um, it's just more free to be outside and 
really you get such a good clear head from being outside being able to you know take in what you're seeing and just take in the beauty of it all and I enjoy being outside and then anytime you can spend time outside then I love it for me being outdoors is such a joy because it's a time for me to really just get away from everything and just connect with what's outside, ultimately connecting with God. It's like a happy place for me because it's the only place where I can get true, just just quiet, true oneness with, with His creation. And you know, I can't get that in many places, but I can go out there by myself and just just bask in His, his glory and His presence and His creation. And it kind of always settles me. Like whenever I have a, a bad day or anything, Sometimes I could just go outside and, and hike and walk through the woods or go on a little hike and it just it just gives me peace knowing that all of this is is what he's created and I can rest in it. It is like a resting place for me. So for me it's always a joy to go outside and experience God's perfect beauty. It's it's just so much more than what you see in a city. You can go out and just truly see the beauty of what's around us and what's been undisturbed for years. You can see God's just glory in 100% just untouched by man aesthetic. It's amazing. It's very peaceful. You can clear your mind from the distractions of life. Turn your phone off, leave your worries at the door and just head out. The journey is just an amazing adventure to get there and then walking and hiking and chasing waterfalls and just all of that. It's just amazing to me. Being outside means getting away from all the influences that the world creates. Being truly free from anything that can hold you back. And going out there and just seeing God's creation and getting closer to Him and spending time with Him is an amazing experience. It reminds me of when Jesus would retreat to prayer. So many times in the Bible, he goes to be alone. Or he goes somewhere you know, in particular or his special place where he it says he goes into the mountains. He goes into the hills to pray. And even Jesus, who had such a clear, direct connection, would still retreat to build his relationship with his father. I like to think that he would go to places like, like we've been to. He would go find a waterfall. He would go up, up this mountain that just has an amazing view of the city below him and the people that he's leading. And it's a way to see God and to know how real he is because he's so real. And this is his creation and we are his creation and we are meant for each other. Just being outside, just I, I feel like it's a good way to relax my mind. If I have like, if I'm like stressed out about work or you know other things outside of life, outside of work, just being you know out there and just you know I don't have to worry about anything. And then you know I just love the fellowship as well that we have, you know. And my dog loves being outside, so <laughs> it's a good way for him to be outdoors as well, especially when the weather is nice and you can feel the wind is coming through. Yeah, it's, it's great, and this what it means to me is just, man, just being outside in God's beauty. The outdoors to me is a lot better than the indoors, first off. I've never had a TV in my bedroom or anything like that. I don't like watching TV. I'd rather be outdoors always. There's nothing like being in the outdoors, honestly. You're out there. It's usually complete silence, and I always have my best thoughts out there. And just being outside in all, like, all the different seasons, is really cool seeing the leaves change and seeing the snow. My dog, that's one of his favorite places to be, obviously. Any dog, any animal loves being in the outdoors. So it's just seeing the pure joy on his face when I'm outdoors makes me so excited. So whenever I'm stressed, whenever I'm overthinking, going out in the outdoors clears my mind completely. The silence, listening to the waves, listening to the leaves blow, listening to the birds chirping. There's nothing like being in the outdoors and just clearing your mind getting some exercise, just seeing the beauty of it all and taking it all in. The sounds of nature, the tranquility, the peacefulness, 
and just being able to see God's creations, knowing that not only are we here, but so are other things and animals and landscapes that are just unimaginable. Nature and being outdoors resonates with me in such and it's a very powerful thing because I grew up that way. Like I, I went from the, a rural area. So it was part of my childhood. It's like how I spent time with my siblings and how I got to know people and like friends from school. We always did stuff outside. Having a car was kind of a big deal, you know, it kinda of gives you that freedom. But I started way earlier with a bicycle riding riding around and, you know, just being outdoors all the time. It really just gives me a sense of freedom that I don't have anywhere else. There's no walls closing me in or like gates or doors that are locked that, I, that keep me from going where I want to go. And at, at some point, you know, when you get to like the top of a mountain, you can see like this as far as the eye can see is just like pure nature. You've got this feeling that, you know, anything is possible. I think without nature, it's really hard to understand God as well because it's, you know, like if you, if you consider him the creator of all things, and you're part of that creation, then um, the greatest way to connect to him is through his handiwork, through like experiencing what he's done and, and the systems that he's created. Nature and, and God play a huge role in, in my life, and I can't have one without the other. You know, we work our jobs and we're in these buildings and in these places, and sometimes I can feel like a constraint, but I don't know, when you're outside, it's just like, just very peaceful for me. I've always just found, I don't know, such tranquility and just peace of mind and I don't feel like there's any expectations on you. I think being outside is kind of just like an escape and like a way to have some freedom for me and it's fun to like think about like whenever you're under a waterfall and you have this water hitting you and you think instead of thinking wow this is just coming from like my shower head you're thinking where did this actually come from and who actually did this and that's God and when you think about that you think about all the like beauty and perfection that he puts into this world for us to me is just it's a huge part of my life it's kind of a sense of freedom and just getting out of the house getting out there in the um in the world and I know that these places exist and I've been there multiple times to a lot of these locations and I still enjoy it every time I go but I'm like there's still so much more these places have to offer that maybe isn't really a common thing like you know walking into a cave where there's a, a creek rushing out at you like full force like five feet deep of, deep of water especially Bankhead there's so many cool little places out in Bankhead National Forest and you I'm like, am I on planet Earth? Am I in Alabama? Like, that feeling, it hits me every time I go there. It's just little things like that that make me really just more excited about going. That's kind of like the feeling that I'm chasing is the, uh, that like thrill, that excitement. You know, whenever you're just released from the world, you're released from society, you're released from all of these things, it's invigorating, it's addicting, it's amazing. And so, I don't know, just the thrill of it is what drives me to go do all of these things. I'm not planning to do it beforehand. Honestly, sometimes whenever we go out, I wear clothes that maybe I'm wearing to whatever event comes after, or like shoes I don't really want to get dirty. It's inevitable. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get muddy. I'm going to get sweaty. I'm going to climb over all the trees and all the rocks. I can't help myself. But it's freedom, and it's worth it, and it feels amazing. I mean, I would say there's a lot of times I'm probably a, a little more daring than some people, but there's people that, you know, are way more daring than me, aka Jay. <laughs> I know he'd do a lot of crazier things than me. I would say, you know, don't let these things hold you back. It's still, you're still able. You are still able. I have one leg and I'm out there to see of how, how beautiful something is. Like, you just gotta go, you just gotta go get it, you know? You gotta go get it. It's out there, it was created, and you gotta go see it for yourself, like up close and personal. There's been many waterfalls where like, yeah, there's a little water in between, 
Okay, we're gonna swim and see that waterfall. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's there for a reason. It's there to see. So I wanna go see it. I have so much joy in getting to go out and hike and be in the outdoors because I get to see God's fingerprint in all of his creation. Getting to see his fingerprint in everything makes all these journeys, these experiences so personal. He has created every waterfall uniquely. Every waterfall is majestic, showing off his majesty. He has made every mountain with a different contour and they are at different heights. These mountains point back towards him every time. He has made the wildlife so beautiful and they are able to survive in the changing weather conditions. The complexity of the weather amazes me and shows how good God is. The relationship I get to share with my Father God is so special and personal because I know how much he loves me and how much he loves every creation and every person I come in contact with every time I'm outside. Everything and everyone points back to God. Because God is so perfect and beautiful, this, this is perfect beauty.